Hey guys, it's been months and months and months since it was suggested that Setsuna would be getting a job plus, and it is finally here. Strap in because this one's going to be a bit of a doozy. We have a lot to go over today. So this is Setsuna's new pose in her job plus. I will come back and do some visuals a bit later, um, but just take it all in for now. Just how beautiful she looks. <clears throat> So, not to waste any time, we're going to hop right into the Kaigen. And the Kaigen is more or less going to be similar to how you'd approach it in Global, plus Gates uh, 4 and 5. So, Gate 1, obviously, you're going to do for the sheer stats of it all. Gate 2, it's going to upgrade her Assassin, plus 1 move, plus 1 jump, passive to give an additional plus 20% physical attack, and plus 5 evasion. The Lust Gate, well... <clears throat> The Kaigen skill, the Kaigen leader skill that she gets is 30% HP, 30 slash, and wind unit defense plus 10. Um, if you have sins to throw at it, maybe. I don't necessarily think this is a particularly powerful leader skill, at least not in the uh, grand scheme of things. There are better leader skills that you can waste some sins on. This is more of a luxury product than an actual, uh, <clears throat> like, viable general use Kaigen leader skill. I could possibly see some of its uses, but honestly, there's just like, when you have leader skills like Nefertis running around, it's just not worth it in my opinion anyways. Uh, do note that you do get Dex and Evade off of that, so if you want to throw two sins at it for a little bit of extra Dex and Evade, go for it. And Gate 4, once again, we are looking at even more um, <clears throat> extra damage and extra HP. Uh, one thing I want to point out is she has damage versus lust on her uh, max level, or uh, max max gate on gate 4, which is a kind of a big deal because damage to lust I've actually recently found is kind of hard to come by, and that'll also make her extremely useful for her own job plus event, which I will be going over in this video. And as for her gate 5, so <clears throat> she has a new skill, well it's kind of a rework of an old skill. Uh, the final skill on the Blade Master kit, which was that uh, line in front of her that goes three spaces. Um, it, it's basically just been jacked up to like insane proportions. It's going to do an additional plus 50 damage to monsters. Um, <clears throat> and the less units that are in the AoE, the higher the modifier is going to be. So it will be doing additional damage if there's only one enemy in that AoE. Which, the AoE is relatively small, so I can imagine that's going to happen pretty often. The Gate 5 is going to jack up the attack from 190% to 250%. And all in all, it's a great skill to have, and it is a Gate 5 worth getting. So moving on to Nensos. As I'm sure a lot of you know, Setsuna now has two Nensos. Um, and... Which one is better is basically the limited one. Um, in almost all cases, in my opinion, the limited Nenso for the skin is better, but just so that way we can go over it quick, let's take a quick look at her original Nenso. <clears throat> so the one thing I do want to point out about her original Nenso is it's actually got a very good Kaigen leader skill. The Kaigen leader, or I'm sorry, Nenso leader skill. The Nenso leader skill for the original Nenso is slash attack power plus 40, Physical attack plus 30, evasion plus 5, damage to greed plus 60, and crit rate plus 20. It's insane. It's an insane Nenso leader skill. You want a max limit break copy of this. It's good. It really is. So if there is a map where you might want to use Setsuna, and you can f slap that Nenso right on her, and not only will she get the benefits from the Nenso itself, the entire party will reap the rewards of just a powerhouse Nenso. That's 70 to 70 to offensive stat modifiers. That's insane. I can't even think of another Nenso. Kudens only gives uh, 60 to physical attack, whereas you're getting slash attack power out of this one. That's a big deal. Um, otherwise, this Nenso is a bit bulkier. The Nenso itself has the base stat of agility, and its group skill for Watasumi is going to be HP. That's pretty good. HP is always a good thing. However, with Gate 5, and just in general nowadays, in Togatame at least, um, if you can't survive, the extra HP isn't going to make you survive. At least, not without like Gates 4 and Gates 5. 
and at that point if you play a little bit safer it's just not as big of a deal um the unit group uh trigger and buff is also going to include dex and slash attack power which honestly it gives a lot of dex and you do have to remember dex is part of her damaging uh, formula however the actual part of the damage formula i think it only appears once and it's divided by four so it's it's just not a huge stat modifier in terms of damage, although it's better than nothing. Uh, unfortunately, the max limit break bonus is going to be counter resistance, which is just not very good. Um, <clears throat> so you're basically just getting general slash attack power out of this, which will make her non AoE skills hit harder. Uh, her non AoE slash skills, like her normal attack, hit harder, where her AoE slash skills are going to benefit more from the other Nenso. The only other upside to using this Nenso is it's much easier to max limit break it and aside from the nenso leader skill remember that um gacha nensos that are five star when max limit break give plus 10 agility and this nenso is no different so you can get some extra agility on your sets up however honestly i think that the new year skin nenso is the superior nenso based that on it is not speed it is hp but we can live with that. The Wadatsumi group is going to have physical attack as its group skill. And there will be an additional group skill that will include Setsuna, Logi, Dias, and Zeke, which is going to give area attack. So this should be giving attacks that have an AoE, extra damage, which Setsuna has those. Great. Um, <clears throat> this is going to be especially true of her main attack that she will be using as well as the other attack i mentioned earlier from her gate 5 i'm not sure if the gate, if they're like coded as area i have to double check because it's it's a uh, it's an attack modifier you don't see very often and i haven't tested it very much other than that uh setsuna is going to have an additional gate an additional group skill i'm sorry that is going to give crit and agility so even if you don't have that max limit break you are going to be getting additional agility out of the Snenso and the big kicker is when you are max limit break on the Snenso you are going to get six to auto jewelry charge which is a big freaking deal on Setsuna who is very jewel hungry in fact she has multiple skills in her kit that are designed to get to just feed jewels into her so she can launch her skills it's going to be costing like 50 60 jewels to like get off a full combo even more if you do like the full full combo so keep that in mind um definitely a good nenso to have there is also a vision ability on this nenso which i will get more into a little bit later and obviously the 10 agility if you max limit break it <laughs> So, another quick thing I want to mention before I go on to the actual gear slots is that Setsuna's Master Ability has been updated. And the reason it was updated is because, frankly, it just wasn't good enough. 100 Physical Attack is clearly not good enough. It is now giving an additional 20 Slash Attack Power. I just thought I'd throw that out there just so you guys know. So, moving on to her gear so the first piece of gear i'm going to look at is her original vcr and the original vcr is going to give 390 hp and max jewels plus 20 and some other nice stats as well uh, death sentence resistance is actually a very rare resistance um, i don't know if setsuna actually can cap it out or not but having a really high death sentence resistance is just a nice thing to have it's not a make or break sell on the item though. The real thing you're after are the max jewels and the HP, obviously. And of course the gear ability, which is going to give you a 30% shields for three uses. So three attacks, she's gonna reduce the damage by 30%. It's not a great shield, but it is gonna help her survive entering a map, especially if she like you start out in a position where you are in, under heavy fire. That is a very nice thing to have. However, the one thing you do need to realize is that if you use this VCR, you are giving up your ability to run regen because she needs those other slots more often than not. Um, Setsuna really wants to be running several different pieces of gear and sadly she is limited to three. So while this is a good VCR to have and it definitely can be helpful, especially like in PvP most likely, um, this is not going to be the only thing you can run on her 
other uh, HP gear. Obviously, is going to include the Tamamo VCR to maximize your HP. But honestly, at that point, I think I'd rather run the VCR anyways, because I think that if I was going to trade off the shields just for more raw HP, I'd rather just pack heals into my party or run regen. Uh, obviously, the other options being regen armor or the Ultima Scarf. Uh, depending on what you want, the Ultima Scarf does have the benefit of having a 10% HP regen instead of an 8%, and a plus one to jump, which will help her get around the map even more. <clears throat> um, there really aren't a ton of other good HP options that I can really think of for her, just generic ones, so it, if you have nothing else, you can just slap any piece of HP gear on. Remember, HP gear is the most important thing. So, for the third slot, the non-weapon slot, we have a couple choices here, and the first choice is going to be the VCR that comes from her New Year's Nenso. Now, this VCR isn't exclusive to Setsuna, it can be, uh, any female Wadatsumi unit can use this piece of gear, however, only a, um, only a female Wadatsumi unit that uses a katana can use the actual skill that is on it. <clears throat> now, the stats on this is 15 slash, I'm sorry, 10 slash attack power, 15 thunder resistance, stop resistance plus 40, and paralyze resistance plus 40. Once again, these are actually pretty nice resistances to have, as these are really, really bad <laughs> statuses to get hit by, especially if you don't have a veil. Um, <clears throat> so, that is nice, but you're really running it for the slash attack power and the gear ability. So, for one time, and for 25 jewels, you can reduce your physical attack and magic attack by 50% and get a gem increase. Um, <clears throat> it's like, um, it'll increase the amount of gems that you can gain, I believe, or is it just... I can't remember if it's, um, if you regen, uh, regen the jewels or if you just gain auto jewel. Or if you just gain uh, jewel gain, I'll test it out when I get into a map just to double check. Um, there's a lot of information I'm going over on this one, and I have a ton of it pulled up, but I didn't quite memorize it all, unfortunately. Um, <clears throat> however, there are other things that you can run on this slot that might be able to compete with it. There is always the old rock VCR. If you do not have this VCR, you can always run the old trusty rock. That's going to give you six starting jewels, seven speed one jump and 10 slash modifier it's just as good damage wise it's just not as good in terms of uh access to jewels the new vcr is kind of taking a little bit of precedence over it but the rock works just as well if you're in japan the raid pouch is a great option as well plus two jump plus 40 to jewel gain or plus 40 to jewel gain you really can't go wrong with that much jewel gain on setsuna uh, it obviously fixes a lot of problems that would otherwise be solved with the other VCR. Um, the main difference is you are giving up a little bit of damage to run this. However, I'm willing to bet this is going to be the optimal way to run her. Just because I've seen what this jewel pouch has done to Bashini and what it did to Arthur. It made them much more viable and less dependent on skills. They can just go up and auto now for their uh, jewels. It's very convenient to have. The downside, obviously, being that you, anytime you get hit by a status effect, it is going to afflict you with said status. Um, there aren't too many other options, in my opinion, that are really worth running. If you don't have any of that, you could always run the Tama, the, uh, that's not the Tama VCR, it's the Easy Way VCR. Uh, plus 10 to wind all damage, 40 luck, and 10 accuracy, and some other status resistance, because I don't have it pulled up right now. Um, it, it's a good general damage item. It's not going to be um, the optimal pe piece of gear you want to run, but it is a piece of gear you can run without too much... Uh, it, it's better than most of the other options that are going to be available to you. Obviously, if you need some kind of uh, damage resist item like the Fujika VCR, the third slot is going to be the place to do it because you are going to be wanting to run a katana. So, moving on to the katana, in my opinion, the Yomi VCR is the katana to run. The uh, Yomi VCR has 50 physical attack, 10 agility, 10 magic attack power, which she doesn't use, obviously, and it has strong versus thunder plus 10. Setsuna does now have a wind attack, so she can take advantage of that damage modifier. 
making it better than the Ogre Sword, at least in my opinion. Of course, the Ogre Sword is still a really good weapon to run on her. There's no reason you can't run it on her. It's going to give pretty much the same damage stats. Um, <clears throat> and you also get a 50% chance to gain physical attack plus 20 when you attack. Uh, that is also very nice to have. And it would actually push the damage probably over where the Yomi uh, Katana is. But the main difference is the Yomi Katana, you don't actually have to... Uh, bargain on that 50% chance which 50% is really good for a piece of gear but you know it kind of takes that out of the equation which is nice um, other options includes the um, <clears throat> so there is the uh, kata katana which I believe is for kata and zen which gives 403 HP 35 physical attack crit plus 20 um, if you use that, then you don't have to run a piece of HP gear, and it opens you up to other options. However, you do have to remember that means you are now going to have to run a piece of speed gear on her. Uh, Setsuna does want speed. She uses the Garuda Blade, which reduces her speed, so she needs some kind of speed to help make up for it, or she's kind of on the slow side. Um, there really aren't any other good katana options, in my opinion, for Setsuna at least. So either the Ogre Blade, the Yomi Katana, or the uh, Kata Katana, depending on what you need and what your uh, gearbox looks like. Obviously the Kata Katana being the only farmable one of the bunch. So going on to her uh, skill loadout, we're looking at her main uh, Blade Master. Is definitely going to be what you're going to want to run as that is the job plus you're going to want to run the uh, holy brawler shura sub on her on most circumstances not all there could be times where you might want to run her uh job plus sub as there is some nice things in it but all in all you're going to be running the shura sub more often than you are not now, she does have options for reactives. You can either run her new Job Plus reactive, which I will go over in a couple minutes, or you can run the Assassin reactive. The main difference is her Job Plus reactive is going to net you more damage, while the Assassin reactive is likely going to net you more turns. I'm going to play around with this a bit, but I am willing to bet the Assassin reactive is going to be the better of the reactive. The better of the reactives under most circumstances because the difference between the assassin reactive and the uh job plus reactive is the assassin reactive can activate like from a distance so if she's like getting hit by arrows it can activate and getting more turns is almost always going to net you more damage than a little bit more damage modifier under most circumstances um <clears throat> one thing i want to point out about the job plus reactive is when i look at this I do not see a timer for the damage modifier that she gets. So if you can get the damage, if you can get this reactive off three times and it stacks up to max, then you're probably going to be doing better than you would with the assassin reactive under most circumstances. But more on that a little bit later. Otherwise, the kit looks mostly the same on the sub as far as I can tell, um, except the there is a new skill on her sub which. I guess I can just max this out quick and I'll just show you in map. So, go ahead and do that. So, let's go ahead and hop into the map so you guys can see what Setsuna can do. So I'm going to be running with the Nefertiri uh, leader skill here because under most circumstances Setsuna is not going to have be using her own leader skill unless it's her own Nenso leader skill. But I do not. I'm a I'm a limit break short of being able to get that. So sorry guys, you're going to just have to deal with this uh, inferior Nefertiti leader skill. Anyways, so let's take a quick look at her um, <clears throat> master abilities here. So let me quick pull up where that other VCR was. See if I can find it. 
Okay, so this twenty, this first twenty-five jewel one here is going to be the um, jewel plus. So let's go ahead and use that quick and see what it does. So it looks like it just gives you flat jewels. So it says gem increase um, 35%, so I'm guessing it's 35% of your uh, max value jewels, which is actually not that bad. Uh, correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, which I could very well be. Uh, the one thing you do want to remember though is that's going to drop your physical attack and magic attack by 50%. So while you are in that state, you are going to want to start collecting as many jewels as you can. Um, there is another 25 jewel skill in her master abilities. And this one is going to have a 50% rate heal, 70% when you're at max limit break. And it's going to give you extra jewel gain. It's going to cost you 25 jewels. It's going to give you plus 40 to jewels obtained. Um, <clears throat> the one thing I really want to point out about this one is that when you're max limit break, that jewel value at 25 jewels you initially paid drops to zero, which means that you just get a flat 40 jewel gain with zero punishment. Um, and remember that if you have the jewel gain from the raid pouch, you're now at like plus 80 jewel gain, which is, let's, uh, let's face it, that's kind of stupid. All right, so <clears throat> I need to get some jewels here quick. So grab some from him. And then I'm going to let him hit me so you guys can see the counter. So as you can see, she got slash up. That is a 20 slash modifier she just pulled out of that counter. Super nice. I'm just gonna go position myself over here so that way these guys counter me all right rather I counter them I guess so now we've gained ourselves some jewels and we have completely buffed up our slash attack from our reactive and once again i'm pretty sure this is permanent as there is no definitive uh time value for this so do keep that in mind if you can get that off it's definitely going to be worth your while so moving on let's go ahead and charge up with the shura completely ruined it, so now I have to charge up with Shura again. Don't worry guys, I'm a professional. Alright, so let's go ahead and see what Setsuna can do. Uh, one thing I wanted to point out is that this 70 Joule uh, wind skill here is Yomi's VCR's ability. You're never going to do much damage with it because it scales off of luck. This 40 Joule skill right here is from the weapon skill system or the weapon kaigen system uh, this is going to be an aoe and it's going to do additional damage when you have dead allies kind of like a zerker um, if you have a full dead team it'll actually do more damage than your wind aoe which if we go ahead and take a look here three th uh, thirty thousand damage and for this uh the new skill here it is thirty six thousand damage however this isn't really the maximum of what Setsuna is capable of because she does have another new skill on her main kit. And this skill, if we go ahead here and take a look at it, it is 25 jewels. It's going to be an AoE around her. And it's going to give her th plus 30 slash power, attack power, and plus 75% HP for three turns. Should probably move a bit away as I'm going to charge up one more time and show you the values with this. Remember, since it lasts multiple turns, you can use it, then charge up. And since they're not both attack, they are going to stack. And now we are going to see the maximum damage that Setsuna can do. 
at least under these circumstances. So we take a look in here. And 33,000 damage and 41,000 damage. So as you can see, Setsuna is capable of pulling off some pretty crazy numbers. Now there is also this sum. Um, 30 jewel skill right here. It doesn't do a ton of damage. It's more like it's just a ranged single target attack. Honestly, I don't even know why it's in the kit because it has awful scaling. Um, <clears throat> and the skill just does not have a high modifier on it. But in general, it is there. So don't forget about it. Let's go ahead and just take a quick look at the skill right here. And I'm going to re-enter this map and I'm going to just go through all the skills just so that way we can see them all as well as go through her sub kit. Told you this was going to be a long one. And I believe that is the sub I'm looking for. So we'll take a look at the skills that we missed then. And just in case you didn't notice it, Setsuna is no longer using the Blade Master pose. She has a completely new pose that she uses on the map where she basically just stands with the hand in um with the sword and with the katana in one hand. Alright, so let's just take a quick look at the skill right here. Probably gonna have to reset the map to go into the sub. Yeah, let's just reset this map. So, the reason you might want to use her uh, actual sub, there, there are uh, four skills on it. One, of, Three of them are going to be um, stat reduction skills. So, one is going to be physical attack and physical defense minus 30. Another will be minus 30 to magic attack and magic defense. There will be a third that's minus 30% uh, dex and minus 20% agility. But the fourth skill, this is the skill we're after right here. So this skill, it has a relatively long range, and it is a TP, it looks like. I have not actually pulled this out of the kit yet. And it's going to buff you for five turns, and it is going to give uh, physical attack plus 100%, and wind unit defense minus 15%. So what I take from that is it's going to buff your physical attack by 100% for five turns, but it's also going to drop your resistances by 15 uh, generally speaking, when you see unit defense, it's just a flat damage reduction, kind of like uh, elemental resistance is, sort of. Um, but you will take more damage, but it is completely worth it seeing as you are now going to be doing much better numbers for several turns. This has three charges on it, which means for if you're on a really long map and you don't need to, like nuke down a single boss you can just toss that on and all of a sudden you're doing like almost 12,000 damage aoe's to thunder units and this is remember we haven't stacked any slash attack 
yet, so let's go ahead and buff that up. We'll get attacked a couple of times here, and, uh, well, maybe a couple times, and get some extra slash damage. Remember, these counters are influenced by your physical attack that's been raised for multiple turns, and you're not going to lose it like you would off of the Tamaru or a uh, charge up. Reminder that your charge up, if you counter when you have charge up on, you will lose that charge up. So do keep that in mind. And now as you look at that, we're up to 14,000, almost 15,000 damage. Yeah, that is a really nice skill to have and I can definitely see it being used on certain maps. You are going to need to choose which skill set you want to bring Setsuna onto a map with. Do keep that in mind. So now that we've gone over her entire kit, how do you get her job plus? Because this is not a traditional job plus. You're going to have to get it through the dungeon quests, which is the Genesis style events. And it's a real pain to get it. So let's start by going into the quests. You need to clear out all of your normal quests and then clear out all of your hard quests. You need to complete each and every one of them five times and it's going to give you some of your job plus equipment. And then you're going to need to clear out the normal and the hard boss, which is going to give you some more of the equipment. Uh, after five kills, you'll have gotten all the equipment you need to get from them. However, you're going to need to keep killing these bosses because the rest of your equipment is in here. So each one of these boxes, you need to get about 300 coins to clear out and three of your job plus equipment are in these boxes, which is a real pain. And this boss is a real pain to, to auto. I did not find a successful way to auto him with the resources I have available, at least my units anyways. So, yeah, this one's a real pain to do. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's not like it's hard, it's just a real pain. The boss himself is pretty easy. I already uploaded a video on a just a way to handle him. Setsuna just can destroy this guy it's it's actually funny to watch what Setsuna can do against this guy Setsuna can start launching attacks that do over a hundred thousand damage so yeah he's not a hard boss he's just annoying to kill because more likely than not you are going to have to manual him there is no easy auto solution unfortunately although I do kind of like these coins I think it's got like a little carp on it or something I do find that amusing so let's hop back into here because we have some fashion to go over and some closing statements. And yes, I know this has been a long one. Thank you for staying around thus far, but now you're going to get to enjoy Setsuna in all her beautiful glory. So as I'm sure you noticed, you can see the scabbards or the sheaths on these swords. This is not normal in the other swords, at least to my knowledge. And Setsuna is the only unit that can use normal katanas that actually you can see the sheaths on. So I figured I'd just go down and take a look at all the sheaths just so you guys can see them. And just one quick thing to point out, you'll notice there's a small flash of light when she uh, sheaths her sword into the scabbard. So yeah, I think that's pretty stylish. It's nice attention to detail. You can see that they actually kind of put some work into this one. Um, but before we do that, let's just quick take a look at what she looks like on her other skins, as I have all of them. So, I think this one looks kind of weird, but, hey, it is what it is. Um, it's nice that they actually managed to get this one such that the uh, cape doesn't really clip too much into anything other than her one arm, and it's really not that noticeable. Um, I don't know what it looks like on a map, though, because I haven't pulled it out yet. But yeah, that is her in her OG skin. And we just quick go to the standard Blade Master skin in case you were curious. I mean, she looks, she just looks so much better now. It's a really nice pose they gave her. Alright, so back to my favorite skin. I do really like this skin. Let's start taking a look at the other uh, katanas. Now, I have everything except the blue gacha katana. 
I think. So we'll just go through them one by one, starting with the uh, Zen and Kata Katana. And this is the other one that you're most likely going to be using, the Ogre Blade. This one looks really cool. And this is uh, Hiragi's katana. This one's kind of uh, flashy. I don't like it as much, but you're almost never going to be using it on her. It does look kind of cool though. And this is uh, Kuza's katana, and I think this is one of the most stylish ones. It's super simple, but has a really cool blade to it. It's a shame it's a magic katana. <laughs> So it's not like anyone else except him can use it, as there is no other uh, katana user that scales like that. And this is, um, I believe this is Yuri's blade. Still looks pretty nice. And finally we have uh, Sakura's blade. And this one, this one's really, really sleek looking. You know, it has the uh, flower petals on the on the uh, design. Super nice looking katana. But I do really like the uh, Yomi one too. I think the color of the sword looks cool. Um, I think the orange really goes well with her blue color scheme. And. Uh, Honestly, it does really just have a really nice design to it, in my opinion. So that's all I have on the uh, sheaths. So my my overall general opinion on Setsuna's job plus, it's freaking ridiculous. I mean, let's be honest here. I mean, I think 40,000 is the highest I ever pulled off without much effort in one of these videos. Not to say she can do the highest damage of all of my units, um, I don't think she can. I think I can get higher with a couple others, but honestly she's probably one of my highest damage dealing units, just in general, that doesn't require a ton of setup. Like, you can get Black Killer Masamune to deal like 100,000 damage with a normal attack and even like more with other attacks, but in order to get to that point you have to kill your entire party and buff her up and debuff the boss or whatever it takes. Setsuna did this with just pretty much with no debuffs, a couple of buffs, some of which I believe are permanent buffs that she gets just from countering units. You know, she just innately does a lot of damage. Her speed has mostly been fixed as you can see right now with the current gear setup I have on. She is rocking over almost 170 speed. And I forget what she maxes out at. I think it's the 180s with the Max Limit Break Nenso. It might even be the 190s with the Max Limit Break Nenso. I'd have to double check. But yeah, she's pretty quick now. You know, she's got a ton of HP. 5,000 HP is a good number to have. Almost 1,300 attack. I mean, it's going to be more than that in the actual map, obviously. But yeah, 1,300 attack is a really good number to have, even though she doesn't scale purely off of physical attack you do have to remember that she has the shura charge up and also that uh bit that 100 physical attack buff from her unique sub the higher your physical attack the higher those numbers are going to be and even if they don't scale purely off of physical attack the higher the number the better you're going to scale that's just the way it is um her dex is no slouch either although that's just not going to be a huge portion of her damage um she obviously can't use the luck skills off of the Yomi Katana, but you know, you can't win them all, can you? Um, Setsuna definitely got what she needed on this update, for sure. Um, you really could not have asked for much more out of a job plus. She basically got everything she wanted, except for more, better jewel gain, which you can get with the raid pouch, in my opinion. Um, I'm going to be doing some more testing with the raid pouch later. 
Um, and I'll give my opinion on that later if I feel it's necessary. Um, like, it's like the item that she needs, I might give that opinion. Um, but it, it is likely going to be the item she needs. I think it's worth giving up the 10 slash modifier and the 35% jewel increase because you do have to decrease your physical attack by 50% for, for two turns. And honestly, that really does hurt her as it means there's two turns where you basically just can't attack. Now you can use those turns to gather counters to get your slash up or go and do more jewel gain. But here's the thing, right? Would you rather have two turns where you've basically gimped your damage to get some jewels and then go into jewel gain? Or you could just get 40 extra jewel gain on your on your just straight up gear and just get the jewel gain anyways. The only time I could possibly see this being worth uh, not using the raid pouch, at least in my opinion, is if for some odd reason you aren't able to run a veil. Uh, obviously, wind doesn't necessarily have the best veiling options. But you do have Hayate and Natalie, even though I never raised Natalie. And if you really, really had to, you could pull in a uh, Veil from another element and use a Nenso Leader skill instead. Um, honestly, I don't think there's much of an excuse not to be able to use the Raid Pouch, at least not in Wind. Yeah, guys, the Gumi did it. They made Setsuna good. If, you, if Setsuna was your gal, you should be super happy with how this turned out. Thanks for watching as always guys if you stayed in this long you are a real trooper because I'm tired and I'm going to go get something to eat now because I've been at this for a while. I will see you guys next time.